G'day. Ronnie Dale, Four Wheeling Australia. Welcome to a video entirely about rooftop tents versus ground camping. So that's swags and ground tents. Which is better? There are a lot of different options and there's also a lot of pros and a lot of cons. Stay tuned for this non-BS video and it should help you decide if you want something like this or something like that. All right, let's start with the pros for rooftop tents. And the first one is most of them are easy to set up. That's the hard shell ones, like this one here. That's a hard shell one. That's easy to set up. But the soft shell ones, we'll get to that in the cons because they're not that easy to set up. With most of your rooftops, again, hard shell rooftops, you can leave most of your bedding inside. For example, this one here, you can leave your pillow, two sleeping bags, or even two pillows, two sleeping bags, a ladder, everything gets stored inside it. So that's kind of your bedding put away and it's ready to go. That is a massive pro for a rooftop tent. Being off the ground, that is an absolute pro. You don't have to worry about camp getting flooded out. You don't have to worry about you know, wet feet uh, or water coming in. There's a lot of things you have to worry about, like insects, bugs, spiders, all that kind of stuff is eliminated by having that ladder and you climb up. You can bang your shoes off beforehand, before you go up as well. There are so many bonuses to being off the ground. Most rooftop tents are usually pretty comfortable because you are paying more for them as opposed to like your ground tents and your swags. You're paying more for it. And usually they come with a decent mattress. They're usually more comfortable. Rooftop tents are also great when it rains, providing it's a hard shell. It doesn't matter where you park, your home is up there. You don't have to worry about uneven rocky ground. You can kind of level your vehicle out. You can put something under one wheel to sort of level, level it out. You can level out your camper trailer and you're all good. Some rooftop tents, you can strap stuff to the top of them so they act like a roof rack as well. This one here on the other hand, you can't. You can't even walk on it, you'll crack it because it's fiberglass. Now again, with the ease of setup, it's also fast to set up, very fast to pack down and to set up. That is the bonus of a hard shell rooftop tent, just like this one. Rooftop tent cons. There are quite a few here. Starting with the soft shell, the soft shell rooftops. The ones that are more square, they're an absolute pain to set up, or can be, and they're an absolute pain to pack down. They are time consuming and they weigh a lot. They're quite heavy. That is something you really have to factor in. So the less you pay for a rooftop, usually the more work there is involved to set it up. And the bigger it is, the more work there is involved to set it up. Take for instance, not picking out someone, but take for instance the Hannibal rooftop tent. It is massive. It is great for space. You can fit four people in there, but it weighs 100 kilos and it takes quite a while to set up and quite a while to pack down. This is one of the biggest cons for a rooftop and that is closing them. It's not too bad on a camper trailer because they're a bit lower, I can reach. I'm six foot one, mind you. On a vehicle that's at 2.3, 2.2, even two meters at height, that's where it's sitting. If you need to close that rooftop, it's gonna be a pain. Even for someone as tall as me, and even taller than me, it's not easy. Rooftop tents are not good for base camp unless unless they're on a camper trailer like this right here. This is the ultimate base camp setup because you've now released the vehicle from the extra weight and when you tow a trailer with a tent on top of it, you usually have a really light vehicle to drive around in and explore the country from base camp. Now, if the tent, rooftop tent is on your vehicle, it doesn't matter if it's a soft shell or a hard shell, you have to pack that down every single time you want to go somewhere. So everyone else who's in a nice swag 
or a tent, they can leave their tents at camp. You have to pack down before you can drive out. So that is the biggest con that I can think of when it comes to rooftop tents, if they're mounted on a vehicle. If you have the soft shell bag, you have to get on top of it and throw that bag around and you're going to be covered in dirt. This, it's not easy to close a rooftop without getting covered in dirt because that bag has been in the elements for the whole trip. The sunlight will hit you first in the morning. Doesn't matter where you put your rooftop tent, you are up high. The sunlight will get you first. Everyone else on the ground, they have you know, the option of putting it right next to a vehicle or right next to your own rooftop. You are going to shade them. So you get longer sleep-ins if you're on the ground, not so much up there. This is the one that I consider the second biggest con, in my opinion, is having a rooftop on top of your vehicle. You have at least 60 to 100 kilos on top of your roof of your vehicle. That is the worst spot to put weight, and that is a lot of weight to put up there. You're going to have more body roll, when you're on technical stuff, if you're off-roading, if you're into that kind of stuff, you're more likely to tip over. Again, having that rooftop on the roof of your vehicle or a high camper trailer behind you, if it's sitting up high in your vehicle, you have a massive wind block on your roof. You are going to be burning, I'd say, anywhere from two to three more liters per hundred because you have that big bulky thing on your roof. Another problem with having them on your roof, you've covered your roof rack. You now don't have a roof rack because your tent's up there. Unless you have a tent that can have stuff on top of the roof. But then you've got a lot of weight on your roof if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Your clearance is also compromised by having it up so high. Your vehicle is already high if you've got it lifted and you've got it on bigger tyres. Now you have a roof rack and then now you have a rooftop tent on top. We're now to swags, ground camping. Now we're not covering tents here because swags versus tents, that's a whole other story. So we can get to that in a different video if you want it. But for now, it's just a rooftop versus a swag. And the pros for the swags are, most are really easy to set up. Now if you have the traditional swag, the Birkin wheels sort of style swag, they don't have the hoops on them. It's just like a canvas sleeping bag that you get into. That is the simplest sleeping you can get, but it's not a lot of room. So in terms of swags, even the dome ones, they're very easy to set up. And they're freestanding. This one here, two arches on each end and a pole in the middle. Some have three poles, some have two, some even just have one. When you consider the price of a rooftop tent, the swag is actually a really good option when it comes to budget or pricing. A top quality ground swag, or a swag, is probably about the same price as a cheap rooftop tent. So swag wins the price war any day of the week. 99%, I'm just saying that because I don't know if all can, but most of them can be rolled up with the bedding. They will be more bulky, but it's ready to go, ready to roll out and set up. And you've got your sleeping bag, you've got your mattress, everything inside it, ready to go. They're very low and very easy to find a spot in the shade. Now this is a big swag, this is a double swag. You also got the smaller swags. You can put them anywhere, even if the ground is a bit unlevel, as long as you sleep with your head uphill, you'll be fine. Never, ever sleep with head downhill, especially after a big night around camp. We gotta get up soon, mate. He loves that swag. You want to get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fourth time you're Matthew's fake. You feeling any better? A little, little bit. You hungry? Nope. <laughs> you're not going to like it. Swags are easier to get warm and cozy. Now, of course, a big swag like this in winter is going to be a bit harder to keep all that space warm. However, if you have a smaller swag, you're going to keep it warm pretty, pretty easy. You still need a decent sleeping bag, but it's a lot easier to keep a smaller swag warm than it is being warm in a rooftop. The other thing as well, you're on the ground, so you've got insulation on the ground, which helps to keep you warm. If you put your swag on a stretcher, I wouldn't do that in winter. It's a good option in summer because then you keep it nice and warm. Cool. Most swags are all weather canvas. Now you can get some cheap, crappy swags, 
but most swags are all weather canvas. Now you are meant to seal your swags before you, you use them, and you can do that by camping in a rainy day or leaving it in your backyard and hosing it down. But they're usually very weatherproof. And this will kick ass over rooftops. You can take your swag anywhere you like. If you're going on a camping trip and your car might be broken down or something like that, you still want to go, throw your swag in your mate's car, off you go. Throw some beers in, throw your swag in, happy days. Go camping in a swag. You can bring your swag on a plane, check it in as baggage. Now you can camp interstate without your vehicle. You can also take your swag on a boat. And that's really cool. Trust me, you gotta try it if you have the option. Put your swag on a boat, go somewhere where only the boat can take you. In windy conditions, a swag is the go because you're not being rocked around up high. If you're low to the ground, it's usually windier the higher you get. Low to the ground, you can get away from the wind. Waking up in the morning, you can get a longer sleep in, providing you put your swag in the best spot. As you can see right now, this is completely covered in shade. It's being shaded by the rooftop. <laughs> so you can, you can easily find nice shady spots, nice cooler spots. There are a lot of pros here. My worst con, swags are so freaking huge especially if they're double swags. Now, I've had a couple of double swags and I absolutely cannot stand double swags unless you're actually gonna cram more than one person in it. They take up so much space. No room for this. Well, it's because all the bedding's in there and it all comes out, but a double swag, this is probably the biggest double swag I've ever seen rolled up. You could use this as a football coach for a tackling pillow. Go for it, girls. Single swags are better. Now I've had a few passengers in my vehicle that carry double swags and it is my pet hate. Nice single swags. If you're traveling with a mate, bring a single swag. Don't bring a big bloody double swag because you're gonna take up so much space. You're on the ground with the elements. Centipedes, ants nests, spiders, you name it. We've had all kinds of stuff crawling around on this mesh. But that's what that mesh is for. It's not that bad. Also, the elements. The camp might flood. If you rock up to camp in the dark like we do a lot, you may put your swag in a low point and you don't realise until it's too late. Rolling up in the dirt. Now, of course, you've had a ground sheet. It's not that much of an issue, but rolling up in the dirt. You're going to get dirty hands, you're going to get dirty knees because you need to stick that knee into your swag to get it nice and tight. It's a con, but not that bad. Once your swag is wet, it is very difficult to dry because it is heavy, thick canvas. If that gets soaked, you're gonna have a lot of trouble drying that swag. You're gonna have to set it up and let it dry for quite a while. Now, everything inside it will also get wet. That is a big con with a swag. They're good for weather resistance, but once they get wet, you could be in a bit of grief. I've had a few situations where I've had to sleep in the car because my swag was absolutely saturated. My sleeping bag, my pillows, everything. The humble swag. Some of them, it's near impossible to very difficult to get changed inside a swag. You may, be, you may well be unzipping that swag, stepping out in your jocks, getting changed because it's quite difficult to get changed in there. And where are going to put your boots as well, by the way, if you're in a single swag? You're going to need a plastic bag or something like that. That's something you need to consider. It might not be such a big con, but you need to factor that in. If you do break a pole, you're kind of stuffed. Unless you know how to repair them. Look, if you've got duct tape and cable ties, you can fix anything, especially swag poles. But just keep it in mind, if you snap a swag pole, you gotta contend with that every single time you're setting it up. So bring some spares, and this won't be a con. So the end conclusion is, in my opinion, when it comes to price, if you're on a budget, and you don't mind being on the ground, just go with a swag. It's probably the best option. 
However, if you want the comfort and you want easy pack down, set up kind of situation and you want to keep all your stuff in there, then I would suggest a rooftop, but a hard shell rooftop. Stay away from the soft shell rooftops. That is my opinion, strong opinion, because I've had soft shell rooftops. They are just, I hate them with a passion. I'd rather be on the ground than have to deal with a big Hannibal soft rooftop that's, oh, it, they're just a pain to work with. You've got to squish them down, strap them down, and put a stupid bag around it. You're going to get covered in dirt. This is not too bad. You get your hands dirty. That's about it. Wash your hands afterwards. It's on the camper trailer. Would I put a rooftop on, a, on my vehicle? No, I wouldn't do that. I'd rather swag it. I don't like having the weight up high. I don't like burning more fuel than I have to. The amount of fuel I would burn with having a rooftop on my vehicle is about the same I would burn towing a trailer. So that is my argument for not having a rooftop on the vehicle. If I had to choose between a rooftop and a swag, I'd go swag. I would actually go swag, although I do really enjoy staying in this um, rooftop tent up here. All right, I'd like to know your opinion and do you have a swag or a rooftop? And for those who are thinking, which way are you gonna go? Are you gonna go rooftop? Or are you going to go swag? If I miss any pros or cons, put them down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And if you want to see a video on a tent versus a ground tent versus a swag, let me know. Cheers, guys. Catch you later.